Hey everybody, Dan Wells here for RVBassFishing.net. I um, want to talk to you a little bit about frog fishing tonight. It's June in Northern California, man. What more can you ask for? The California Delta Clear Lake are just shaping up beautifully this year. We got high water in both places still. Warm weather, they're eating the frog and they're eating it now. Um, we got the snack proof open coming up in August. That's why we kind of wanted to get out of here. We wanted to break some of these frogs down, give you some tips on how we rig them. Because there are a lot of tricks that we've been doing for a long time out here that will make that frog way more efficient for you to get more bites and to get more fish in the boat. Before we do that, before we start getting into actually how we rig them, color them, stuff like this, I wanted to talk to you guys about equipment because I'll, I'm here to tell you that equipment makes a difference between getting a big fish in the boat and not. I mean, we've all heard stories about guys catching giant frog fish on little spinning rods and this and that. That's a freak deal right there. If you want to be a true good frog fisherman, you need the right stuff and the right mechanics to get out there and get the job done. So that's what we're going to start with. I want to give you a little bit of information on that. Number one, rod. What I throw is a Dobbins Champion Series 736C. The rod is 7 foot 3 inches long. It's a 6 power rod. It has an extra fast taper on it. Let me explain a little bit. A uh, 7 foot 3 rod allows me an ability to really make some really quiet underhand roll casts. You know, I can really kind of finesse pitch that bait around, make them small casts, have it land right on a levee bank, you know, quiet. Six power rod, when they do eat that thing, I can hit them, I can get them moving, I can get them in the boat. And now, one of the things that most people don't understand is a taper of a rod. This rod's an extra fast taper. Now, what that means in frog fishing is that means that when she comes up and eats that bait, less of that rod is flexing till I actually lock up in the backbone and start driving hooks home. That's that extra fast taper. Now, you know, some guys do throw the moderate fast stuff, you know, which might be okay in some open water situations. But, again, we're talking big fish and heavy cover, man. So when they eat it, I want to put them hooks home and I want to get her moving. So that extra fast taper is the way to go, undoubtedly. Um, next, the reel. Abu Garcia, Revo, SX, 7 to 1 gear ratio. That is absolutely critical when we're talking about frog fishing. Um, again, I can't stress this enough. Big fish, heavy cover. Heavy rod, when I hit them, 7 to 1 gear ratio, I'm getting them moving, man. They're coming to that boat whether they like it or not. Next thing, spider wire, 65-pound braid. Um, braid is absolutely critical also. I mean, you could, I can't even say, you can't throw mono. You know, guys will tell you they can and they can't, but I'll promise you this. If you throw braid with your frogs, you are going to put more fish in the boat 100%, not a doubt in my mind. No stretch. The ability to, if you do hook a big fish in that cover, the braided line is going to help you actually tear through that cover rather than mono. Um, it floats really great. You know, it, it, there's just so many benefits of the braided line that I see no reason to ever throw them off. Okay, guys, we talked about the equipment needed for frog fishing. So I want to take a quick minute here to talk to you about the mechanics and kind of some fundamentals of frog fishing. Um, the biggest question I always get asked is guys will ask me, how long do I wait to set the hook on a fish? I try and tell them this, and really nobody could ever explain this better than Bobby Barrick, and he will tell you to evaluate the strike. Um, I agree 100%. Um, to kind of give you, you know, uh, more insight on that, Here's a scenario. You fire that frog up to, let's just say, a rock levee, some sparse tools, what have you, and, and you know that frog's in pretty much open water, and you start walking that bait, and she's coming out towards you, right? You get around the outside of that weed line, open water, she comes up, eats it. Okay, that's an open water frog fish. She came up, she blew on it. I'm setting the hook as soon as I see her. I see her come up, I start seeing white water going, I'm hitting her. Now, keep in mind, that's open water. You know what I mean? She was really aggressive. She came up and ate it. Next scenario, let's say we're dealing with that same open water area, okay, and that frog comes back out and all of a sudden you get one of those swirls under, or a fish comes up and sees on it. She comes up, kind of pushes it, you know. You really need to be able to evaluate that strike and find out, is it a, I'm setting the hook immediately or am I waiting a minute? You know, when you see that huge white water going, bam, hit her, get her moving. When you see that swirl, you know, give it that second. Use your judgment. Try and visualize your frog. See, do I still see my frog? Do I feel any weight yet? What I might do is I might actually reel into her real quick. You know, I see that swirl. I'll take a couple quick, you know, cranks on the reel. If I feel her, I'm swinging. Um, the delta is notorious for fish coming up and actually rolling over and coming down on the frog. You know, so you really need to evaluate the situation, find out how the fish hit, and make your judgment and make it quick. Fishing heavy cover, 
grass mat stuff like that, that becomes really, really visual because, you you know, I'm always trying to wash my frog, you know, because when they come up through that mat, you could have stuff going every which way. You know, you have cheese going this way and fish going that way. Um, you know, you just don't know. So what I'm doing is I'm always trying to wash my frog. She blows up on it. If I don't see nothing and she made a clean blow through that mat, again, I'm going to set the hook real quick and I'm going to set it real hard. Now, she kind of just, you know, through the mat, one of them deals, you know, or just opened up a little hole. I'm trying to see that frog and find out if I got any kind of weight on the rock, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to hit her. Um, casting with a frog is, is absolutely critical as well. Um, all these components, are, you need to put all these components together to make them all work for you to become very efficient with the frog. The casting, you know, when you're on, let's just take the California Delta for example. You know, if you're out there in the middle of summer, in the middle of a summer day, and there's no Delta breeze blowing, you know, you got pancake water out there. It's hot, it's balmy. Um, those fish know everything going on in their little environment. They're much more aware of what's happening around them than you are. So casting is critical. You know, you need to cast in that small little shade pocket that's eight inches round, and you need to get it in there without making a splash. That's where, again, that rod comes into play, you know, making a little roll cast, some little pitches. So I'm trying to get that frog to hit that water without making a splash as quiet as possible. A lot of times if you got a real hot spell down on the delta, they eat that thing as soon as it hits the water. If you make the right cast, put it in the right shade pocket or what have you, they eat it right then. Um, you know, the casting, like I said, is it, just so critical down there. You want those fish, you're talking about shallow water, weed lines, those fish know your trolling motor is coming from a long ways away. You need to be able to make that 20, 20 foot little roll cast and still put that frog right where it needs to be, real, real quiet.